Tracy, Dad's youngest daughter, Dickie, as my father used to call me. I was told that he wanted a boy, and he named me after Dick Tracy, the cartoon character, the police investigator, of course. We were all given nicknames. Uh, Dad called you the nickname he picked, and it was your nickname forever. Um, our mates, Craig, is known as Hubcat. Chris is the great white hunter. Uh, Dawn is Squeak. Kathy Joe is Pootie. That's another story that you left out of your speech. Um, I'm sure many of you were given nicknames, um, some not so nice ones, uh, knowing Dad. My, Dawn, my sister Dawn ended up naming him a nickname, and this is so true. He, she called him the cranky old thing every time he came in the door. Dad's unique and legendary personality either pulled you in or drove you away. Uh, a truly gifted, self-taught, hardworking, brilliant man. A left-handed tradesman that had become a right-handed tradesman and was an amazing, that was the amazing accomplishment alone in itself. Some things he continued to do left-handed. I can never forget the beat of him driving spikes to build this shop. Three taps and the spike was in. He had a special bond with post-it notes, so much so that the company gave him a lifetime supply uh, and a letter from the manager. <laughs> Dad had a crazy, unique humor. Sometimes it could be offensive, but those that knew him knew that he was just trying to have a laugh and accepted him for who he was, loving to laugh and joke around and keep things very lively at the North Corner. I went to bed listening to Aunt Ruth, Uncle Ike, Uncle Alton, and Aunt Ruby, and Jamie uh, playing cards in the trailer, laughing, hooting, hollering most of the whole summer. I heard gunshots as a kid, ring out at skunks and coyotes. I also watched as he put on a vest and ran out in the middle of the street to yell at schoolmates that I went to school with that were speeding around the corner in his underwear. <laughs> I watched him bat dogs. Um, I watched him take a blowtorch to a chainsaw that wouldn't start. Um, of which, I might add, was actually his fault because it was out of gas. Um, we fixed motorcycles together. I helped him undercoat at the lower garage before he started undercoating here. I went with him on the jitney. Those of you who don't know, I'll explain what the Jenny is after. We borrowed beach gravel and brought it home for our driveway. Uh, he upgraded the Jitney to, Jitney to the Skylab over the years. It was a trailer that was a homemade trailer that he kept adding to, and adding to kind of like a, a Jet Clampett Beverly Hillbillies type of a tractor. We were so proud to drive in that tractor <laughs> up and down the street and call gravel, I mean borrow gravel back from the beach. We played crib all the time of which he always won because he cheated. And there are many things we did together, but there, of course, there are many things we hid from him, too, over the years. Uh, little does he know, I fled the house. Uh, Don was in the tub. And as a teenager, we weren't allowed to use the phone because the business was run through with the home phone. That's another story. I left her in the tub with the water running and it flooded the kitchen, the basement, and everything. He doesn't know that. Um, and little does he know, Mom did it too. <laughs> Dad also loved to roll up money and save it for a rainy day. So we found lots of rolled up money that we never told him about over the years. Um, it was like a constant treasure hunt. For Dad's 25th anniversary, Kathy Joe and I, we bought him a, an engraving book. And he just loves to write his name on everything. And if you know Dad, everything has his name on everything. So it was Donald G. Tupper. Um, and later with that engraving gun, we, we found these coordinates engraved in the side of a filing cabinet. Of course, Dad didn't remember what on earth these coordinates were because he would measure out and write it down. He thought it was the sewer system, but lo and behold, it was money. <laughs> we uh, dug it up in a course. It was buried money uh, in a pickle jar that froze and condensed over the years and really stunk. That was the best year we ever had in the North Corner because we had to spend it really fast. <laughs> Mom's purse was reeking of pickle juice. <laughs> so there were also times that I used to think that we were would be in so much trouble. 
but we, he never said a thing. Like the time I broke the crankshaft on three or four mowers, because uh, if you remember, Daddy had motors on all these pieces of cement in the yard to show everything. I was the one that used to mow. And I'd always push the mower a little bit too close so I wouldn't have to whippersnip later. <laughs> and I would wreck all of these mowers. There's about four that I can remember. Or when, uh, the time that I smashed up the three-wheeler. Or the time I broke the window with the golf ball. Or the time that Don and I drank a beer, filled the beer back up with water. <laughs> he actually never said a word. The times that you really thought he was going to say something. <laughs> Dad's crazy rules about phone use. You never touched on this, so I'm gonna, I can't wait to say this one. Um, <clears throat> that was the absolute worst. Um, being in Scotts Bay on a party line and a restricted phone use, we were never allowed to use the phone. Plus the business was run through the party line. So imagine what teens would have to do today with that kind of role. But um, one day that I'll never forget was a day that he was telling Kathy Joe to get off the phone. Off phone, off phone. You were on the phone. You were on a past your blunt time room. And Caddy Joe pulled the phone out of the wall, hook and all, put it in Dad's lap. And he really thought Dad was going to say something. But he just sat there after she said, Here's your stupid phone. And uh, he just laughed and hooked it back up. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time I think I ever saw him speechless, to tell you the truth. So um, I skip a bunch of this. It's quite long. We also had many rules about not waking up on the weekend. I can still remember the clinking of his, <sighs> his spoon and his tea in the morning <laughs> just to wake us up on the weekend. <laughs> there were a handful, just a handful, of times that I saw Dad quiet. And these were the times when he was watching his granddaughter, Maggie, sing. And you all know her as Maggie Luke. She used to sing one special song that we all love when she sang. You sang it, you say it best when you say nothing at all. He loved that song and the grandpa song. So the special things that he used to do for us, I wanted to mention, um, will never be forgotten. Small things like asking us to button up the, the top button of his dress shirt, the electrical tape on his wool socks to hold them up so they wouldn't slide down in his boots. <laughs> the way he shaved, the way he combed his hair, the gel, the smell of the cologne, with the mix of the smell of hot oil, of course. <laughs> um, Dad loved to tease. The teasing eventually helped me to have a tough skin and the ability to speak my mind and stand up for myself over the years. Although he didn't like to be teased himself. Um, there were a pair of cowboy boots that he had custom made one time that he never wore again after I made a comment <laughs> that he was walking like I used to, learning how to walk in heels. And now, who, who has a Mac has those, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, they were put away, and he never wore them again, because I teased him in a, in a new custom boot. Just recently, my last uh, most fondest memory, Dad and I took a short trip to Liverpool. Uh, around this time, exactly last year, it's my best memory so far, or by far. Um, he talked to everybody in the Blarney Stone, the restaurant. I don't know if I'll ever be able to go back there again. <laughs> um, he constantly told me I was driving the wrong way, or I was beating, or it was not in the right lane. Um, I let him go on and on. When we finally reached our destination, I just said, Dad, I'm going to call CTV and give him a heads up about the news. And he didn't know what on earth I was saying. But what are you talking about, Dickie? And I said, I'm going to tell them that a crazy man has been left to wander alone in the streets of Liverpool today. <laughs> and then he laughed and goes, well, I better shut up, I guess. <laughs> because of Dad, I love animals. I have a sense of humor. I love to laugh. I may be just a tad bit stubborn, just a tad. And uh, can be a grouch on occasion. His traits live on in all of his grandchildren, and my dad. Um, uh, there is a tough of tantri tantri temper that has been passed on through the generations. I won't say which ones inherited that one. <laughs> but um, <laughs> today, I, I have a sweatshirt that I bought for him long ago. Or actually, wasn't it just last year? <laughs> no. I was going to wear it just to show you. It was a hoodie. He didn't like it, and he took a knife, and he cut off the hood. <laughs> Sharpie and a sweatshirt.
put your uh, ear on the table. And what I'd love for you to do is to write one word on a sweatshirt that comes to mind when you think of my father, so that I can pass this on. And keep it near me. Um, long ago, I remember joking around with Dad. Some may find this offensive, but I said that if he was going to keep on being grouchy, that he wasn't going to have any friends left that would be his Paul bearers. And uh, we'd have to get some dogs and take a dog sled. <laughs> he laughed. He thought that was the greatest joke ever. But certainly, with all the people here today, we would have had tons of Paul bearers to pick from. And I want to thank you for all coming, and I hope any of you who come up and can share a fond memory and a story of my father. And um, thank you, Kathy Joe, for putting this all together. I know I 